Um, those, those are my notes. I, I need those actually. Um, sorry, could I just take those? Um, if I may, could I just ask you about some of the forthcoming votes that are to be taking place? How will you be voting on uh, the proposition to decriminalize marijuana? I'm a fan of the idea of direct democracy, the system whereby rather than voting for people to represent us in government, we the people actually get to vote on the, the biggest and most important issues ourselves directly. But I have to be honest, there are a couple of reasons why uh, direct democracy, even though I'm a big fan of direct democracy, there are a couple of big things that frankly uh, terrify me. Can you spell decriminalization? Uh, marijuana? Can you spell marijuana? How about we just say pot? In last week's video, I talked about something called the uh, tyranny of the majority, where direct democracy can end up eradicating minority groups unless you have careful barriers and boundaries put in place to prevent minority groups from their personal rights being infringed upon. Today, I'd like to talk about something that I've decided to refer to as the tyranny of the ignoramuses. How about uh, abortion? What's abortion? We won't talk about that. It's all very well us having the power to vote and have our voices heard. But what happens when the people with voting powers are uneducated and badly informed or uninformed, where we have either been fed bad information or no information? How about the changes to the schooling system? Would you vote yes or no? So this problem comes from two angles. It's bad information being presented to us from above, from the government, and bad education with the people below, or, or worse, no education, where people are being given uh, complicated information that's either false or it's wrong or it's too confusing to get our heads around, and the people don't have the education or the awareness of the issues to be able to make a properly informed choice. Um, okay, how about Trident? Trident. Tri Trident? You're filling your nappy, aren't you? Yes, okay. Give the lady her privacy. I think of this like, uh, what if you were to go to a supermarket and every product had uh, no branding and no packaging and no labels on? where it was all in empty, neutral packaging, so you really had no idea what was in any of the boxes. Sure, we'd be free to make whatever choices we wanted to, but how useful would be those choices if we didn't have the proper information on the packaging to let us know what was inside? Or worse, what if the information that was on the packaging was false or incorrect or inaccurate or misleading? Then it's a recipe for making bad decisions. At the other end of the scale, what if you have people going shopping who fundamentally have really, really bad educational ideas or no education about what constitutes proper nutrition? Well, you can end up coming home with a, a shopping trolley full of sweets and chocolates and crisps and biscuits and fizzy drinks thinking, that's great, that's nutrition because uh, it looks nice. You'd end up with, a, with lots of very, very bad decisions being made. toast. So the thing is with direct democracy, it's handing to the people a tremendous amount of power. And as every good Spider-Man fan knows, with great power comes great responsibility. It's true. It doesn't look like jam. It doesn't smell like jam, but, but I hoped it would be jam. And so I, I figured, well, let's pretend it's jam. It doesn't taste like jam. So here's my worry. I would love to see direct democracy implemented in the United Kingdom, but it could only be implemented successfully if the information being presented to us could be guaranteed, or as near as is possible, could be guaranteed to be accurate 
and could be checked by somebody like the Plain English Campaign or, or some kind of organisation whose job it is to filter out all the complicated stuff so that the information being presented to us is presented in a way that's really clear to understand and is accurate and is uh, and where we really do have the, the pros and the cons presented to us in a way that we can get our heads around. But at the same time, if direct democracy were to succeed in Britain, it would have to be accompanied by not just a revolution in British politics, but a revolution in our education system. We would need to educate the next generation very differently to the way they're being educated now. The interesting thing is when you start to question whether or not our current uh, democratic um, political system is fit for purpose, whether it's the right thing for the 21st century. It really kind of opens a can of worms when you start to really look at things, because when you start to look at our education system, my goodness, there is a Pandora's box full of really obvious questions that we need to ask. But that's for a different video. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about a revolutionized education system. we have an opportunity to change things for the next generation for the better. Let's make darn well sure that the next generation has a political and economic education that matches the power of the responsibility that rests on their shoulders already with our representative democracy and can potentially rest on their shoulders with the, the, the enhanced power of a direct democracy. I'm going to take a break for a couple of weeks with the next video while we have Christmas. Ding, 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 ding. There's lots more to talk about. We're just scratching the surface off this subject, but thanks very much for watching. Tune in next time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, Lizzie, you're such a good little cheat. <laughs>